The TM4C123GH6PM is equipped with a 12 megabit per second USB 2.0 compliant USB port. This USB port is capable of on-the-go, host, and device modes. In Chapter 6, you'll look at the basics of USB and how the USB port is implemented. Since we don't have an adapter cable, we'll limit ourselves to experimenting with the USB port as a device. USB connectors come in multiple sizes and most have four pins, power, ground, and two data lines called D plus and D minus. Some connectors have a fifth pin for USB 2.0 ID. In the diagram on the bottom right, note that the pins for the power are slightly longer than the data pins. In this way, power will be connected before the data is. The USB 1.1 standard defines the host as the master and the device as the slave, speeds up to 12 megabits per second. Devices can consume 500 milliamps once they are enumerated, but only 100 milliamps at startup. USB 2.0 supports speeds as high as 480 megabits a second, but a full speed 12 megabit per second port like the one on the Tiva C series device is still compliant. USB 2.0 also includes the on-the-go addendum where devices negotiate for host or device status. USB 3.0 supports speeds to 4.8 gigabits per second. New connectors separate the transmit and receive data lines to support these higher speeds. Most USB products sold are slaves. For instance, a USB flash drive or camera. USB hosts are normally a PC or other computing device but the host function can be embedded into smaller designs. USB on the go is a dynamic switching between the host and device roles. When two on the go ports are connected together, they undergo a negotiation to determine which one will act as the host and which one will act as the device. For instance, if you connected a digital camera to your PC, you'd certainly want the camera to be a slave to the PC's host. But if you took that same camera and connected it to a printer, you'd want the camera to be a host to the printer's slave so that you could print. When a device is connected to a host, the host polls the device for information that describes it. This information is called descriptor tables. The device descriptor contains the manufacturer and product ID codes. The configuration descriptor contains the power consumption and interface types required. The endpoint descriptor describes the transfer types, speed, and so on for each of the endpoints required of the port. The process of the host querying the device for all of these structures and then configuring itself is called enumeration and that's what allows plug and play to operate. The USB port on the TM4C123GH6PM is USB 2.0 compliant at 12 megabits per second full speed operation. It can also operate in low speed mode which is 1.5 megabits per second. The device has an integrated PHY or physical interface so that the hardware connection to the USB port is very simple. All the normal transfer types are supported control, interrupt, bulk, and isochronous. The port also supports DFU or device firmware update in ROM for both host and device operation. This means the device can be plugged into a host and the DFU can accept update files from it. It also means that the device can act as a host and download update files from a properly formatted device like a flash drive. TI is a member of the USB Implementers Forum and Tiva is approved for use of the USB logo. The stacks, the hardware and so on are certified USB compliant. We also offer vendor and product ID sharing or vid pid so that you can, do not have to purchase the codes. You can simply sub-license ours. The block diagram for the USB peripheral is shown at the top of this slide. This is an integrated USB controller and PHY or physical interface that offers up to 16 endpoints. Enumeration requires a dedicated control input and dedicated control output endpoint. There are up to seven additional configurable input endpoints and seven additional configurable output endpoints. The controller module has 4K of dedicated endpoint memory, which is not part of the device's SRAM. DMA is supported on three separate in endpoints and three separate out endpoints. For bursty data, 
and one of the endpoints can utilize a 1023 byte double buffered buffer from the 4K memory. TivaWare's USB library supports host, device, and on-the-go operation. It is built on the Peripheral Driver Library's API set. This construction adds a framework for a generic host and a generic device functionality that you can build on. It includes implementations of common USB classes. The construction of the framework is layered so that the designer can decide on the amount of abstraction that they want to utilize. Drivers and INF files have been included where needed. The list on the right shows some of the device examples and supported Windows features included in the USB library. There are also a number of host examples, but since the kit does not include the adapter cable, we'll leave those for you to investigate. The USB library APIs are built on top of the peripheral driver libraries APIs. You can decide at what level of customization you want to deal with. Take a look at the far left application one. Here you want to pass simple data to a higher level API. This might be a customization of an existing device, in this case a custom human interface device like a mouse. As you move to the far right of the chart, your level of customization increases to the port point where you might be implementing your own USB protocol or write or purchase your own USB stack. Obviously on the far left of the chart, less time will be spent developing the USB software on, while on the far right, the developer has much more control. Where should you start? For an application that involves implementing its own USB protocol using DriverLib, Working with USB driver API will be a recommended approach. This provides the lowest level abstraction, giving you the most amount of visibility and control. This is represented in application four in the diagram on the slide. For applications in between, like examples two and three, a user can pick and choose a level of abstraction that is not too high or too low. Note that devices that resemble existing applications, and many do, require significantly less new code. In Lab 7, you'll use a TivaWare code example to implement bulk transfers of data from your laptop host to and from the USB port on the launchpad. You'll use a small Windows side application to send and view data while also watching messages on the terminal display. You'll also use the emulator to view the transferred data in the TM4C 123GH6PM memory.